We can almost guarantee that an incredible artifact will be found somewhere in the world today. Perhaps it's happening right now while you watch this video. Today isn't special, though. An incredible discovery was almost certainly made yesterday, and another one will be made tomorrow. We're living in a golden age of artifact discoveries, with amazing finds happening all the time. You're about to see the proof in this video. Why was this hoard of gold bracteates deliberately buried in Raid, Norway, 1500 years ago? Well, according to the experts who've had the opportunity to study them firsthand, they were probably left behind as a votive offering to the ancient gods. When they were unearthed by a metal detectorist in late 2019, they became the first discovery of their kind in Norway for more than 70 years. Bracteates like this were made by melting down imperial Roman coins to make thin golden discs, with bead details around their rim and loops fixed to the top so they could be worn around the neck as pendants. The figures stamped on their faces are mostly taken from Norse mythology. Wearing jewelry like this was a symbol of someone's wealth and status during the 5th and 6th centuries. Examples have also been found from as far afield as Germany and England. As for what prompted the people of the time to bury something so valuable, there was a series of volcanic eruptions in the area between 530 and 540 that were so severe that ash clouds blotted out the sun for a full 12 months. People would have been terrified, so they tried to appease the gods by leaving them tributes like this. In 1622, a Spanish galleon called the Santa Margarita sank off the coast of Key West in Florida, USA. The galleon is known to have been heavily laden with treasure when it went down, so treasure hunters have been searching for its lost riches ever since. One of the most valuable artifacts ever to have been recovered from the hoard is this stunning gold chalice. Even after so many years underwater, the etched scroll work on the upper surfaces of the chalice is still visible. It might only be 5 inches tall and barely wide enough to fit a softball inside it, but a professional auction house has given it a value of $1 million. Even though the chalice is almost certainly from the wreck, probably a belonging of one of the galleon's many rich passengers, the wreck itself is still yet to be found. It's still out there somewhere on the seabed, and when it's eventually discovered, it's likely to contain golden goods even more valuable than this. It's no wonder that people are still so keen to find it. It turns out that the waters around Florida are a great place to go treasure hunting. Check out this collection of gold rings and chains that was found by a family of amateur treasure hunters just off the state's east coast. These are lost goods from another Spanish shipwreck, this time one that happened when a whole Spanish fleet was torn apart by a hurricane in 1715. The rings and chains are all valuable, but the standout item from the discovery is a gold filigree necklace. It's part of a pyx, an accessory worn by priests around their necks to carry the communion host. That means it would have been considered a sacred object by its owner. The Schmidt family, Rick, Lisa, Hillary, Eric, and Lindsay, believe they've recovered almost half a million dollars worth of goods from the wrecked fleet so far, but still think there's more to be found. The other part of the pics was found by another treasure hunter 25 years ago. So the long-lost artifact can now be fitted back together and become whole again for the first time in more than three centuries. In April 2021, a real estate development company began excavating a plot of land for a new development in a South Indian village in the Telangana district. No sooner had the work started than it had to be called to a temporary halt because of an incredible treasure discovery. One of the earth movers struck a solid metal pot, and when the pot was investigated, it was found to contain gold and silver ornaments along with a collection of precious jewels. Word of the discovery spread quickly, so before long, there was a crowd of villagers at the site burning incense sticks and saying prayers. Why did they respond in such a fashion? Because according to them, a temple stood on this land in ancient times, and so the valuables were probably left here deliberately as offerings to a goddess. In total, the workers found two dozen gold earrings, 51 gold beads, 11 gold neck chains, 
and a handful of precious stones, including a large ruby. The precise age of the goods is unknown, but it's safe to assume they've been in the ground for several hundred years. Locals are now demanding that a new temple should be built on the site, but whether that happens or not remains to be seen. Our next artifact might not have been discovered recently, but it was saved recently. It's known as the Crown of Thorns and is believed by some Christians to be the very same one that Christ wore during his crucifixion. The artifact was inside the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France when it caught fire in April 2019, but was rescued from the flames. The crown wasn't on public display inside the church, so the fact that it was locked away somewhere might have been what saved it. The artifact is a hugely controversial one. Scientists have been able to prove that it originally comes from Jerusalem, but there are questions about its age. It's undoubtedly ancient, but testing suggests that it's closer to 1,600 years old than 2,000 it would need to be in order to be the genuine article. That hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of believers who think that there are issues with the testing process that might explain the discrepancy. The crown was carried into Paris by King Louis IX in 1239 after the Crusades. Its history prior to that is unclear. Sometimes, although not very often, a museum has the honor of announcing a new archaeological discovery. It was the turn of the Museum of West Bohemia in Pleasant, Czechia in August 2020 when the coin collection was found in a forest close to the Claude Ruby Monastery in Takov. It's an astonishing collection of 14th century gold and silver currency and represents one of the biggest coin discoveries in the history of the country. Rather than being found by professional archaeologists, the coins were found by a young couple who'd gone for a walk in the forest to alleviate boredom during one of 2020's many quarantine periods. The coins were found scattered across the forest floor rather than buried beneath it, so it's likely that they'd recently been disturbed by the wild pigs that frequent the area. The majority of the coins are gold ducats stamped with the image of Czech King Charles IV, who was also the Holy Roman Emperor. Experts think that the coins were hidden by someone who lived at the monastery during the 1370s and didn't want his fellow monks to know that he was secretly wealthy. Our next artifact discovery also involves coins, and it's an even bigger one. This isn't only one of the largest and most significant coin discoveries ever to be made in Spain, it's one of the biggest in the history of the whole world. The currency was found in the Spanish town of Tamaris as workers dug trenches for the installation of new power cables in the area. Their machinery broke into an old clay jug which immediately began to spill coins. Archaeologists were summoned to the scene and when they got there, they discovered a further 18 amphorae, all of which were stuffed with 4th century Roman coins. The combined weight of all the coins exceeds 1300 pounds. They're in such remarkable condition that historians believe they're Florida coins an expression meaning that they've never been in general circulation. That indicates they were probably reserved for a special purpose. The most likely explanation is they were either a large tax payment collected by the Roman Empire or a military fund that was earmarked for the payment of soldiers. It takes a hardy metal detectorist to head out into the Shapshire marshes of England in search of treasure. It rains a lot, and conditions underfoot aren't always pleasant. There's treasure to be found if you're brave enough to look for it, though, as is evidenced by this stunning Bronze Age bula. It's approximately 3,000 years old and is unusual because Bronze Age gold has never been found this deep in the British Southwest before. The name bulla comes from the Latin word for bubble, which is a reference to the fact the object is hollow. The unusual crescent shape with its wedge-shaped sides is made using multiple layers of gold sheeting. A tunnel between the collars at the top edges provides a space through which a chain or necklace could be hung as a pendant. What's most remarkable about it is the engraving with geometric shapes etched across the surface with such precision that they must have been made using a compass. That's an incredible degree of sophistication for something made by a craftsman living before the time of Christ. 
going sifting through fields and digging up land is the most likely way to find an ancient coin. But it's not the only way. This beautiful coin spent years locked away in a child's toy box, and nobody even knew it was there. It's a fantastic example of a Queen Anne Vigo coin. Only 20 of them were ever made, all of which were minted from gold that was looted from Spanish ships by the British in Spain's Vigo Bay in 1702. The coin was put up for auction recently, and the seller, who lives in Bishop Stortford, England, explained that he was given it by his grandfather when he was young and then forgot all about it. When he found it again during a clear out of his old things, he gave it to his own son to play with before realizing that it might be worth taking it to be valued. How his grandfather came into ownership of it is unknown, but it turned out to be a wonderful heirloom. When the day of the auction came, the coin sold for an incredible 225,000 pounds. The archaeologist who found this tiny pendant at the Bronze Age site of Solnitsada, Bulgaria, must have had a very sharp eye. It's so small that it could have easily been missed, but instead it's become celebrated as one of the country's most outstanding gold discoveries. Its value doesn't come from the fact that it's made of gold, Instead, it comes from the fact that it might be the oldest piece of worked gold ever to be discovered in Europe. The 24-karat gold pendant was found inside a 6,300-year-old necropolis, but experts believe that it might even be two or three centuries older than that. Even though it was found in a necropolis, the pendant wasn't inside a grave. Instead, it was positioned between two graves, seemingly on purpose. It might represent a connection between the people buried in the two graves, or alternatively, its placement might be something to do with a ritual that we can't hope to understand. No other gold artifacts have been found at the site, so it seems somehow out of place. We can't even rule out the possibility that someone dropped it by accident. Stories about people going hunting for lost Nazi gold have become almost cliché. There are legends about buried Nazi treasure in almost every European country that was involved in the Second World War. But occasionally, we get a glimpse of the truth behind those legends. Here's one such tale from Germany. Metal detectorist Florian Botch literally struck gold while out with his device close to Lundberg in Lower Saxony. There, hidden in a hollow under a pine tree, he found 218 solid gold coins believed to have been seized by the Nazis either before or during the war. The oldest of the coins was minted in the early 1830s, with the most recent coming from 1910. None of them are German in origin, the bulk of them are Belgian, with the other contributions coming from France, Italy, and the former Austro-Hungarian Empire. Rather than being intended for general circulation, the coins were minted in batches with the intention they'd be purchased by banks or wealthy individuals for investment purposes. The remains of coin bags were also found at the site, both of which were marked with the Imperial Eagle, the swastika, and the name Reichsbank Berlin 244. That leaves us in no doubt about who the last owners were. What better way to sign off this video than with a $200 million treasure discovery? Here's a truly jaw-dropping hoard that comes from Costa Rica's National Park. The treasure was found by a pair of park rangers who were patrolling the park after a heavy storm. The storm had disturbed ground that hadn't been touched in years, revealing five wooden chests bursting at the seams with treasures. Inside them, the disbelieving park rangers found gold and silver coins jewelry, gold ingots, ornate candlesticks, and religious icons. It's highly likely that they were looted by a pirate several centuries ago. The park is on Cocos Island, the place that has such a long and storied history of piracy and so many legends of buried treasure that the government was forced to ban treasure hunting in the 1970s to stop people constantly digging up the land. In total, there are just over 89,000 artifacts in the collection. Historians differ in opinion about whether this hoard once belonged to pirate Captain Bennett Graham, Portuguese pirate Benito Benito, or the infamous treasure of Lima that was stolen by Captain William Thompson in 1820. We suppose knowing who stole it isn't as important as the fact that it's finally been found. 
subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.